the pop-up there, folks, if you just want to click on the pop-up. And then without any further ado, um, Mary, I'll hand over to you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm delighted to participate in this afternoon's Moodle Munch session. Thank you to Suzanne and Rob for the invitation. My name is Mary Lark and I am Operations Manager with DCU Alumni Office here at Dublin City University. I'm going to share how the DCU Graduate to Student Mentorship Programme uses Moodle, the Loop database, to support a mentorship programme involving internal and external users drawing on flexible of the database activity. I'd like to start with an introduction to the DCU Graduate to Student Mentorship Programme. Formerly known as the DCU Structured Mentorship Programme, it has won a prestigious IIDT National Training Award for Excellence and uh, in Coaching and Mentoring in, 2000, in 2018 and was shortlisted as a finalist in 2020 and 2021. It is a joint initiative co-organised by the Career Service and the Alumni Office here in DCU. The programme runs for six months between November and December, uh, sorry, November and April, and pairs second year students with alumni mentors for the purpose of career and personal development. Uh, alumni and students are matched based on their areas of expertise professional expertise, DCU course, and their areas of interest for mentorship. This is supported by the application of the Loop database um, by the DCU Loop platform, Moodle, sorry, the Moodle database via DCU Loop platform. The mentoring program assists the university in providing a transformative experience, student experience by pursuing active engagement with our alumni community to volunteer as mentors for our DCU students. Mentorship is mutually beneficial relationship with mentors passing on professional insights and expertise that can come from real world experiences and challenges. It has an enormous impact on students' employability skills and self-confidence when applying for future work placements as cited by the DCU Career Service. At the centre of the programme is a collaboration between alumni mentors and students that include monthly one-to-one -one meetings, skill session and a work shadow day in the mentors organisation. The programme has grown since its foundation in 2003 with implementation of video conferencing such as Zoom, we receive alumni mentor applications from our international alumni community and alumni in various career industries. The role of our model, uh, the role of our mentors is transformative student experience here at DCU by assisting the development of a DCU student. Our graduates give back and volunteer to the Dublin City University to their time, experience and expertise. And the programme provides a range of benefits that can be captured on the mentor CV. This is evident in the shared testimony by our recent 2020 mentor of the year, Tom Feeney, with his second year of mentoring on the programme, highlights the benefit of the virtual environment and also the experience of the programme as a previous mentee. From mentors, our Colleagues in the career service dedicate their time assisting program mentees. As a mentee on the program, you learn to complete a reflective journal on your mentorship experience and complete learning agreements. In addition, mentees complete information sessions, CV, interview, and a career action plan where feasible mentors provide a work shadow day, and the mentors sign the mentors sign off on this. Our mentor of the mentee of the year last year, um, Sophia, also explains and highlights the guidance for our mentors when looking for your first job and applying for that first job. Our mentorship program starts with a connection, a matching connection that is supported by our use of the Moodle DCU Loop database. The slide briefly outlines how and why we use DCU Loop to connect mentor and mentee matches. At the start, our application process in October on receipt of our mentorship applications from both mentors and mentees, we request the creation of a DCU loop course with assistance from, from our colleagues in TEU here in DCU. Within the loop course, mentee details are imported to the database with fields such as name, course, application questions and area of interest for future mentorship. An individual record is created every, with every mentee within the course. Applications are then received from mentors, both internal and external to DCU, with both a DCU email address, student email address, or an alternative preferred external email address. Mentors are then enrolled on the course as a non-editing editor role, restricting functions such as download and report. Mentor email addresses decide their, their entry route to the DCU platform, with DCU emails providing users to opt for the DCU uh, DCU student and staff option with their own preferred login, with their own login and password set. 
For non-DCU external users, they are enrolled on the program and provi are provided with login assistance. Mentors then log into the loop, into loop to select their program mentee and to confirm mentor are enabled to access the program to view the mentees to aid the selection process. So we use DCU loop to aid our matching process within the mentorship program. Um, before I go for any further, I'd like to just display how that happens. So I'm going to just skip one slide. So on entering DCU loop, the mentors are greeted with a course that they've enrolled on. So in this instance, it's the DCU graduate student mentorship program. Options are then available to select their mentee within this program, and they filter it through to select. So I'm going to show you an outline of an application. Um, to assist mentors selecting their mentee, we've applied filters also. So they can look at their course name, their title, their reason they want to um, pick the area of interest. So in this example, like marketing and finance. So they can filter in that. On su su successful selection, and decision, the mentor then selects the cogwheel here. And on entering that, it, they're able to enter their credentials. So their name will be able to appear. And in this instance, I have Yvonne McLaughlin as my mentor. Um, alumni staff are then enrolled as teachers and we can download and within the alumni office and the careers office that we can download a CSV file with the mentee's name and corresponding mentor. It's deemed a successful match and the pro program proceeds to intro introductory link communication, sharing contact details for the partnership to begin the first meeting. To revert back slightly, uh, I'd like to acknowledge that the training and resource troubleshooting and support is also within this, this process and is very important within this process as it gives us first instance to clarify any questions or queries with regard to their um, login, whether they've selected the correct mentee, and we can we could double check that. So using loop to assist our mentorship matching. Um, again, I just want to reiterate that we have both external and internal users of the program. So with that, we would have we have seen that mentors have limited exposure to loop. Those that are recent graduates adopt faster to the system because there's familiarity with it. But there's also knowledge growth within those for returning. What we also have done for the options of to filter, we can filter with regard to our courses. Uh, unmatched is also a possibility. So we can actually filter out those mentees that have been selected already to, to provide convenience to the mentors that not, have not selected a mentee within the second tranche. Um, also within GDPR, we don't share personal contact details on loop. That is shared by when the match has made uh, on loop and then the introductory emails are sent from the alumni office to introduce the mentee and mentor. Our lessons and shared le learning, our lessons and shared knowledge Availability and of resource scheduled Zoom calls increased mentorship training. So what we have noticed is um, in the years since 2018, we've applied different techniques to increase adoption with our mentors, ranging from we've created a resource video, we've created um, troubleshooting with help and support from TEU. And we've also had um, an option where when we are launching the mentorship matching process that they have the option to have a zoom call immediately after that means that if anyone has instant difficulties logging in that they have the resource to contact the alumni office and dial into that zoom call to resolve any issues um, we have noticed higher engagement through our mentors and self-selection uh, particularly on the day of when we release um, our mentees are available for selection uh, 45 to 50 percent of mentors enrolled on the program will go to loop and select their mentee. So this has a knock on effect, as you can imagine, that reduces resource of manual matching within the office. Um, in 2022, we had 83 percent of uh, mentorship pairing matches completed via loop, which was a substantial amount. I think there was very little then for manual matching. So it completely reduced the staff resource with with regard to this. Um, also, we have had feedback that the mentors solely use Loop to select their mentee. Um, as part of a product add-on, we wanted to ask about the forum and to share different um, updates about the program. And we were asked not to, that they particularly use Loop as a selection tool. They don't use it as a communication tool. It's their selection tool, and that's their preferred option. 
Um, in 2023, we had an addition of a second database, which was quite interesting in that when the first database of mentees were second year students, we also had a calling for postgraduate students and final year students that wanted to participate in the program. And through our colleagues, we developed a system where they, they may have been entered in the course initially for the mentorship, but the second tranche of mentors that hadn't been matched were then filtered into a second course. So that allowed them to partic uh, participate in a second mentoring. Um, so again, I just want to reiterate, thank you, Rob, for the opportunity to present and to thank the Career Service, the Alumni Office and TU for implementing this loop function for successful matching in our mentorship programmes. And it's over to you, Giga. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Good, good afternoon. Uh, actually, good evening from from the country where I'm from. I'm currently from. I, I'm doing this call from Georgia, where I live. I represent Ilya State University, and um, this is one of the sta biggest state university in Georgia. And the topic which uh, I, I would like to highlight today is a peer review with rubrics in Moodle assignment. And this is a task that uh, was created under the Erasmus Plus project, which actually uh, Ilya State University is participating with Dublin State University, and the, the, the idea has, uh, brought, uh, was brought from this side. And uh, I would like to, um, I, first I will briefly describe the uh, idea behind this activity, and then I would like to demonstrate that, how it looks like into, into the Moodle platform that we are using. So as for the project, the project was funded by the Erasmus Plus, and uh, it's titled like this assessment in healthcare education goes digital and the main aim or the objective of the pro project is to enhance the digital assessment in the field of healthcare education together with Ilya State University and Dublin City University two more higher education institutions are involved in in this project which all together makes four institutions so the, the, there are several work packages and activities in this project. I'm not going to tell you that much information, but what is the most important is that the project idea was brought. So the people gathered around the field of <clears throat> healthcare education, and they thought that now is the time when we have to think about the transformation into the assessment, teaching, learning, and assessment. And this transformation was meant uh, basically transforming the traditional way of teaching and assessment into a digital one. And this project was uh, was funded during the COVID. So this pandemic also had kind of influence on that because at some point people start thinking that perhaps now is the time when we have to brought digital competencies into the medical field as well. I, I'm not sure how it is in in, in uh, Ireland or UK, but in Georgia, we are still having quite conservative people in the field of medicine. And I, I think it has uh, it, its, its uh, reasons, but but for me, I, I don't have any any education in the field of healthcare or medicine. I'm, I'm working at the university as a deputy director of the library, but at the same time, I'm responsible for the learning infrastructure of the university. I by myself is responsible for the Moodle uh, a web page that we're having at the university and all of the um, e-tools that are used in the teaching and learning process in order to enhance the quality of teaching. So the, 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 so I, I was asked that now we have we are participating in this kind of project and perhaps you can you can also be involved here and um, um, we, we can all together make uh, make this happen. So the the uh, the necessity from, from the side of the faculty members was that um, there were certain activities, there were certain activities in the, uh, in the medical field. Uh, basically, those activities are from the clinical skills um, that young students are, uh, ha have to pass. Um, and the, the idea was that making these activities in a digital way, but in addition to this, uh, the faculty members also wanted to include the peer assessment because 
Uh, as we all know, the peer assessment is used quite a lot. Uh, so the history of using the peer assessment is quite a, uh, long and, and the effectiveness of uh, peer working is also that actually there are a lot of research that says that uh, the, the, it's quite effective when when it comes when, when students actually have to assess each other. Uh, but in addition to this, uh, so first uh, I was or we were given this task that first of all it, it should be digital, then it should be peer assessment. So there won't be a teacher who will assess the students, but there will be. The, the, the classmates of, of, of that students who will assess each other. And the third criteria was that it should be assessed by rubrics, which was created by the faculty members, but the students have to first read uh, or see the, 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 the tasks that their classmates submitted, and then they have to use rubrics in order to assess um, the work they have done. But in addition to this, there was also a demand or request that the rubrics should have a textual uh, kind of textbook where the student, the reviewers can write something additional comment or textual feedback. So when it comes to peer review assignment and you are a Moodle person, the number one activity that comes into your mind is uh, the workshop. The workshop that is uh, used uh, quite a lot in, at, at our university when it comes to, to peer assessment, when students have to submit the text. But now it was a bit difficult for us because they, uh, they, they also the uh, workshop has a functionality to, to, uh, to, to be added, to be graded by the rubrics, but you cannot really have the textual comments in those rubrics. And, you cannot uh, change the grades of that rubric. So it, it, it basically, the grades should be only uh, one number, like you have certain criteria, but all those criteria should be, for example, three points or four points. You cannot really navigate that much. Uh, so this was the challenge at, at, at first time. So, and then we had the selected skills, as I've mentioned, this, uh, those three skills were selected uh, from um, uh, but by the faculty members, the hand washing, sterile glove application, and vein puncture. So the whole idea of this is that the students at some point could make these activities at home, for example, the hand washing activity, they should capture it by their smartphones and because it's easy to, to make that kind of videos and it only takes one minute or even less to, to make it. And then they have to submit those files into the you know, Moodle platform. And after that, the, the, the peers have to make the peer review of that submitted um, videos by the rubrics that were defined by the teachers. So it was a complex, task for us. So what we did, we divided this into steps and first the rubrics were created by the faculty members. I was not involved in this part because uh, I, as I've mentioned, I, have, I, I don't have education in the field of healthcare or, or medicine. So the faculty members created the rubrics, uh, the assess basically those are the assessment criteria, and reviewers should have to just double check whether this criteria was met or not, or to what extent it was met. The second step was that uh, the grades of the criteria uh, were differ according to the content. For example, if, if the first few steps, uh, you, uh, the, in the few steps, students can get one point, but the number five, or uh, it might be the tenth step, in that case, uh, in that case, the grade might be not one but uh, ten because there's special uh, demands. So for example, you can you might wash your hands correctly, but on the seventh step, if you touch anything, uh, it, uh, everything is lost. So for this reason, the grades of the criteria are, are different, and I will show you in, in a shortly how it looks like. And then we thought that the the best way to do this peer review assignment is not choosing the uh, workshop activity because we have that rubrics and that grading, 
is just to create an assignment, just a simple assignment that the that is given in, into the Moodle. We created that and we defined the rubric. So actually, what we did was just we put we take we took the rubrics that the faculty members created and embedded it into the assignment. Uh, next uh, step was that we asked students to capture their hand washing. Uh, which they did, and they submitted those video files into the Moodle assignment. Actually, we asked them to upload the videos on their YouTube channels because all of the uh, students are getting the Gmail account from the university, so they have this uh, YouTube channel as well, they, they, and they can easily submit the videos there. And what they did was uh, they had to embed those videos into the text box which was given under the assignment. So they submitted their assignment. After that, the teachers uh, defined the reviewers. So, I mean, the students who should review the videos that, was, that were submitted. And in order to grade those papers, in order to have access to this assignment, those students were given the teacher's role uh, specifically for this assignment, not for the course, but for the assignment in order to navigate uh, into the assignment and have an, uh, a possibility to grade it. And uh, yeah, so so the process was like that. And first, and let me just um, show how it looks like into the you know, Moodle platform, not just uh, showing you the theory. So this is how our platform looks uh, like. And this is actually the course, a standardized model course. As you can see, we have here the instruction for the reviewers, and then these are the simple assignments. So what students do is uh, the, 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 the ones that made the videos, they just simply come here and submit their assignments here. But the reviewers, what they, they are doing first, the teacher was uh, gave them the teacher's role. And after that, they go here, they come to the course, they watch this video. This is kind of instruction just in order to make them prepared what they should assess. Then they go to the assignment and they view all submission and they see who, who submitted this for um, from, from the student side and they click great, and then they see the video that the student have made. Oh, sorry for that. Um, it's only one minute maximum or, or one minute and seven uh, seconds. And then this is the rubric that was defined by the teachers. As you can see, the rubric is quite complex because we have several criteria here. As I've mentioned, it, 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 it varies also, the points also vary here. So in this case, in, you, your student can get maximum 0 0.5, but then this summary comes in, and in which they can get 10 points or nothing. Um, but so this is also a text box. So in addition to the points, the student, the reviewer can also write here something. Uh, for for the students, so this was a crucial part for from from uh, according to our faculty members because they wanted to, in addition to that uh, grade, they wanted us to create the solution where the reviewers can actually write something. They can explain why they uh, graded this. Uh, with a certain easy for the reviewer, they just read the criteria. First, they watch the video. Then uh, I hope that you you hear me because that was a notification. Yeah, that, I think you. Uh, I think, I think oh, okay, that, perfect. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. They, 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 see, they watch the video, then they scroll down, they see the criteria here, choose the point they wish to, uh, and give them the feedback if they wish. Uh, so and uh, they just choose the point, they scroll down, the, 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 this is the rubric, and after, after they have finished it, then they can uh, give the overall feedback as well, in addition to the feedbacks and the criteria, and then they uh, save it. Once they save it, the grade is uh, 
automatically, I mean, uh, the, the, the SAMT. So each student, when they go there, the students who submitted the videos, they see the grade that they got here in this assignment and also the feedback they get uh, from the reviewer. So this was, but this is something that we kind of made uh, under the project. This is still a trial kind of, it is not uh, like the, 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 we are still in the very first uh, phase. So what we are thinking that we do have some challenges here because uh, uh, we, need, uh, we need to explain how it works first to our teachers because those teachers might not have that, might or might they might not, they might not, they do not have that uh, knowledge, that deep knowledge in how the model is functioning. Uh, so we, we think that perhaps we need to create the user guide how to use or how to make this activity. We also need to explain it to, to the reviewers. But I would say that for the students, we, we made a pilot study for this and we had quite big number, 20, 30 students who graded and who participated. And uh, they find, found it very easy to navigate through there. And, but but there's, uh, there is another, another big issue, how objective the students, uh, how objective the students' assessment is. So it, uh, the, the, the biggest fear here is that when I assess my classmate, I, I might not be that strict uh, so the grades uh, that the students are giving to their classmates might not be the ones that the teacher will give. But this is another story. This doesn't have anything with the Moodle activity. But uh, yeah, the, uh, I, I think that that was all what I wanted to mention here. Let me just yeah double check it into my presentation. Yeah, that was all that I wanted to mention here. This was the solution that we came to. I mean, I, I'm not saying that this is the only one and true solution, but this is what we did. And yeah, if you have any other questions, any thoughts, I'm here to, um, yeah, to, to listen. Thank you.